What's up, y'all? Savage Tiger here. And today, I'm gonna talk about, uh, you know, the game on Saturday, September 10th, 2022, uh, LSU against Southern. And, you know, just my thoughts on the game. How I think we, where I think we did good, and where I think we need to improve on, for the for the, for the difficult part of the season, which will come up next month. Uh, but man, I gotta say, what a big day in Baton Rouge, man! The city of Baton Rouge had a huge day, and I couldn't be more excited. I think it's, I need to get this light on. Okay, that's better. Um, it was a big day for the for the city of Baton Rouge because the two school, the two universities in that city finally, it's crazy that they've been neighbors for a long time, probably over a century. And then this is the first meeting in football between the two teams. Like, I know we've played them before, like the last decade, we played them in baseball and we played them in, in uh, basketball, but never in football for some reason, man. And I'm. I was really excited about this since last year, and I, uh, I knew we were gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna be a blowout. But, um, and I did not do. I wanted to do a preview video, but I never got into got to it last week. And of course, the hype and hate on Friday nights. Um, then I decided I wanted to combine those two together for this game because. You know, it's Southern, it's the first time we're gonna play each other. And, you know, the city of Baton Rouge, you know, it, it's gonna be a big day for the city. And I I wanted to combine the two into one video, but then I just decided not to do a video at all because then like, what's the point of making a hype and hate for, I would, you know, I will never do hype and hate trash talks for uh, the teams that we know we're gonna beat, like the, especially most of the out of conference schools that are cupcake schools that we're playing. Like in two weeks, we're playing New Mexico. I will not be doing. A, I, I will do a preview video, but I will not do a hype and hate for that game. Uh, then in our eleventh game of the year, which is uh, U, against UAB. Uh, I will not. I will probably won't do a hype and hate, but I'm I'll, I'll still I'm still gonna see. But I'm not sure. Probably not. But definitely a preview, like a more serious anal analytical video about the team. So there's that. Um, uh, let's get into the game, though. Let's get again into the LSU and Southern game. First of all, I talked about how big of a day it was for the city of Baton Rouge. The, it was going to bring the city together, even though we knew which team was going to win handily. And that's what happened. Um, some records were broken for LSU in this game. We scored 37 first quarter points. And that is a LSU school record for most points in any quarter, basically in one single quarter in, in school history. That is amazing to me, and and we would have had thirty two. Oh yeah, we would have had forty two, except uh, it was thirty seven because we scored. We go score. We scored five touchdowns in the first quarter, um, you know, and then uh, so we had thirty five, and then we blocked the punt, and the ball rolled out of the end zone, so it, it was a safety instead of a touchdown. So we almost had an amazing. Thing going, but we and nevertheless we still delivered and uh, we made a lot of big plays on both sides of the ball, which was really encouraging. And I gotta talk about where I saw good things, and that is the defense as a whole. In terms of like uh, pass coverage, I know this is not gonna mean too much for any position of ours, but. Um, a wise man once said, if you approach the, a football game the right way, with the right focus and the right intensity, you know, the right assignments, doing what you need to do, and 
trying to accomplish your your goals as a team or as an individual, you can get better playing anybody. Even if you play a high school team, like literally a high school team, if you play them, if you approach the game the right way, you can get better in that. So, um, we won this game 65 to 17, and it was great. We I've never we've never we haven't scored 65 points since 2019 when we won the national championship, and it was great to see. We I thought we were very efficient on offense. Uh, like I said, 37 first quarter points helped with that, and basically we ended up with 51 halftime points. Basically, through two quarters of football, we had 51 points, and that is amazing, man. The highest I've ever seen LSU score with is in one half is 49, which was against uh, um, Oklahoma in a playoff game in 2019, the game before the national championship. And, um, man, I, it just gave me good signs of the offense. I thought we came out and made some adjustments. Um, on defense, uh, the, I thought we got a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and we we did a great job for the most part stopping the run. I know when our, whenever our second, like whenever especially our third and even fourth stringers got in the game because the score was so out of hand, then we got a little sloppy, missed some tackles, and you know let people run. We weren't stopping the run very well, but you know what? These these guys have not. This the only way they can get experiences to play, and that's why we only play them when it's the game is seriously out of hand, and because it helps build depth down the road. And I think they can get better if they uh, get in there. And you know, if they make mistakes, so be it. That's the only way to learn sometimes. Um, but it, you know, it, it wasn't too sloppy. So that was a great thing. We then some, we, built, we buckled down some, but uh, the pass defense I thought was really good. Our linebacker, Mac of Baskerville, had himself a ball game, got an interception and returned it for a touchdown. He got. A, pick six and then he's the one who blocked the punt and which got us a safety 37 first quarter points you know um he had a damn ball game in my opinion he deserves a game ball he's the mvp of this game so um the the linebackers and defensive line i thought as a whole played really well uh, that's for the defense. I thought defense is going to get better, and there's a big challenge for the defense this week against Mississippi State. Uh, you know, they pass a lot. They throw the ball like probably 90, somewhere between 90 and 95% of the time. They just throw the ball. That's all they want to do. They run the air raid pro style offense, and, you know, uh, it's one of the, it's, it's rare. I think a lot of teams used to run it back in the day, but now teams run the spread more. And but it's still it's a rarity, so we're gonna have to prepare for it. And it's going to be a workout game for the DBs for the secondary. They're gonna have to be be disciplined and know how to tackle well. But I will get into that when I'm talking when I'm previewing Mississippi State, uh, probably tomorrow. So, um. As for the offense, I thought the offensive line, we switched some things up. We put Charles Turner at center, and uh, that was what really helped us. Uh, um, I think against Florida State, we had Garrett Dillinger start at center, but we made that we made that switch. And I know it's hard to tell right now, but it will we'll, it'll show maybe later in the season if we're getting better as a unit. And that's mainly the key, man. We got to be good up front if we want to have success offensively for the most part. And I thought we were really good. Uh, our quarterback, Jaden Daniels, had himself a good game. He was very efficient throwing the football, you know, running it when he needed to. He just, on the first, on his first scramble, he just scrambled in for a touchdown. My God, that, that was, he's got amazing athleticism. I love, you know, he's going to be a very dangerous weapon. And I'm glad we have him for the running, for the rushing attack. You know, he's going to be hard for a lot of defenses to contain him. Uh, I'm very happy with what I saw from throwing the ball. He was he was accurate for the most part, delivering it to his playmakers. Um, the receivers, man, they had himself a good game. 
Brian Thomas caught a touchdown. Uh, Kayshawn Butte didn't catch any touchdown, but he made some good catches. Um, you know, Malik Neighbors got himself a touchdown pass. Jack Besh got himself a touchdown pass. Um, I think our receivers as a whole play really, really well. Um, running backs, I thought we we ran the ball well. I thought our running back, um, I thought the best running back was Armani Goodwin. He got a lot, I got he got a lot of snaps, and he we, he showed some of his explosiveness. That is amazing, man. He he did really good. Um, Uh, Noah Kane rarely got carries for some reason, but that is, uh, I guess we want to give some of the other running backs a chance in this game. Uh, the walk-on, Josh Williams, I thought for a walk-on, he's a really good player, and he builds depth at the running back position for us. You know, he's he's someone we can also depend on because he has a lot of experience now. He's been playing with us since 2020, so uh, that's very encouraging. You know, we just didn't really run too much. We just for some reason but we like to throw a little more and um that's why we don't see a lot of the yards but i think for the most part we really racked up a lot of rushing yards and and of course that's always really good and uh, special teams were solid um uh, you know our punt and kickoff coverages are real solid we don't really give them returns and uh you know kicking was great in this game punting uh, also we made every field goal and every extra point, so that is great. And, uh, aside from that, that's all the positions I had for this game. Uh, how that I had to go over, and uh, you know, Southern. I think they have a really good football team. I don't, I'm not sure they're going to be really good, but they got a decent, at least a decent team because they scored 86 points. Uh, they beat they beat a team called Florida Memorial. I don't know where they're from. The week before. Uh, they beat them 86 to nothing. So, you know, for that, that's impressive, honestly. And, um, I think the coach, their coach is really good, and they have good at some good athletes on their team. Uh, the quarterback, we we heard about him, and we completely shut it shut him down. So, that is really really encouraging for my defense. And, because uh, I think they're going to have some success in their conference and the FC. They can even make a run at the FCS playoffs if they can uh, pull together as a team. Because they, they got it in them. I think they got some good athletes. They got a decent team over there. Um, they just ran into a lot of hell. Of, they were just undersized, massive underdogs, severely undersized, severely outmatched, outmanned in every position to LSU. You know, just superior athletes all across the board here. But, uh, man, it was a big day. Like, I keep talking about this, I know, but it's it's never happened. This is the first time in history it's happened. Uh, it was great to see Death Valley full for Brian Kelly's first home game. And uh, a lot of Southern, fan Southern supporters made it. You know, probably a lot of them are families of the of the team of the players on the team and but you know no matter who it is it, it was great that the whole city the whole the two universities came together and celebrated each other and that was amazing to see um i think that's all i got for this game and uh you know just uh i'll be previewing mississippi state uh tomorrow and then I'll do a hype and hate for that on Friday because it's our first SEC game. For all the conference games, I'll be doing hype and hate. And I probably, and I will not be doing hype and hates for like, if it's a big out of conference team, then I will. But if like Florida State, it's a big name, even though they're not that good of a team. You know, uh, but I will, uh, but teams like New Mexico and Southern and UAB, I don't think they're necessary to do hype and hate videos for. But I will do that on Friday. And it's going to be exciting. It's going to be first SEC game at home, 5 p.m. kickoff. I'll talk more about that tomorrow. And um, we got a tough one, and I'm just glad we got. We're, uh, 
we're a one and one and we're just trying to get better every week and implement uh, the system under the new coach, Brian Kelly. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for today. Uh, you know, hit the like button, share, subscribe, comment. Only if you feel like it, you don't have to if you don't feel like it. Uh, go Tigers, you know what it is.